Welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 47 and my name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls and I want to welcome you to this space. If you are a Patreon subscriber, I want to say an extra special thank you to all of you who keep this show on the air week in and week out. Thank you to those who choose to support the show and if you would like to know more, please head over to patreon.com slash wellfordpearls. Everyone should have received their uh, November Fiber Club by now. If you have not received it, please get in touch with me. And if you're interested in seeing how I spun it and what I did with November's Fiber Club, please head over to wellforpearls.com. You can also find uh, show notes and links to some of what I talk about over at wellforpearls.com as well. So if there's anything that you're wondering about that I share, head over there. And if you can't find what you're looking for, please get in touch with me. I have a few works in progress this week to share with you and I also have a couple of new acquisitions for fiber. I had promised a book review this show. I received from Story Publishing Yarn Texture by Jillian Moreno. I wanted to say thank you so much to the folks over at Story Publishing. It is a real honor to be able to review this book for them and for you guys. I have read through most of it, but I would actually, I'm actually i going to take another week to review it. There's a couple of things that I want to go back and look at and write down a couple of notes before I start ad-libbing on the show because I don't want to forget anything. There are a couple of sweater patterns in here that I'm quite in love with. There's one in particular that I'd really like to make. Um, if you guys own this book, you may know the one that I'm talking about. It's a modular um, sweater. That's Charlie Whining, sorry. Um, anyways, I would really like to make it and there's a few other things that comments that I have about the book So please stay tuned for next week for a review of this book and thank you again to the folks over at story publishing for Giving me the opportunity to review it. That um, was really lovely of them The kids have been up most nights uh, quite late and they've been up early in the morning and we have are very short on sleep. Um, I think Nora's had quite a bad cold the last week or so. She's been coughing quite a lot. There's quite a few people at work who are coughing and don't have any other symptoms other than this annoying cough. And my husband and I are doing everything we can to try to stay healthy and to get as much sleep as we can because we're both feeling quite um, drained and burned out and it's the end of the fall and we're, now we're just ramping up for Christmas and. So we've been drinking lots of hot tea and I actually bought some eggnog because it's my absolute most favorite thing in the world. And I've just been really enjoying it because I didn't want to start making it this year. I thought I'm just going to buy it and enjoy it rather than putting it off and putting it off and not getting any because I hadn't made it. We have a giveaway running in the Ravelry group right now. The Ravelry group is called Wool N Spinning. N. Um, because I've had quite a few people reach out and say that they haven't been able to find the Ravelry group. If you search under groups, wool and spinning, it will come up. Um, my dear friend Katrina, who is also a co-moderator in the group, uh, has a Etsy shop called Crafty Jack's Boutique. Sorry for the crinkling and the mic. Some of you will have seen this already. She has offered up this beautiful gradient set. It's a rainbow set of battlings. Um, I think she calls them fiber nests. I'm not really sure. Um, it's 2.2 ounces, about 57 grams of her um, rainbow gradient. Um, in the November episode thread in the Ravelry group, all you need to say and contribute to the conversation is by sharing what you would make with this gradient set. Um, it's a beautiful prep. She also threw in for us some hand cream, which I can attest is absolutely amazing because I have some. Um, and it is shea butter, this particular um, scent, and it's beautiful. It just smells gorgeous. So if you go over to the November episode thread in the Ravelry group and tell us what you would do with that beautiful rainbow bat, uh, ra rainbow set, uh, you could be entered, you could win. Normally, I would actually draw names today. I would actually um, do the giveaway, but because we started a little bit late this month and I wanted it to give a good month for people to catch up on the show and see what's going on and be able to get into the Ravelry group and contribute, 
I am going to run it until the end of next week. So we will do the giveaway on December 1st. So I hope that you win. So our guild, um, before I reach over and grab that, uh, so this past uh, month in guild, we have our guild meetings on the third Tuesday of every month. Um, so I actually was leading the program this month. I led a program that was an hour long on all of the different spinning drafts. It was very intense. I felt really nervous at first when I, I, I have no problem getting up in front of people and speaking and talking, but I that for some reason this, I felt very nervous um, because the topic is overwhelming and I was in the room of very experienced spinners and weavers and um, I got some really great feedback afterwards. It was really lovely for to the people who who came up to me after it was and to um, um, just their encouragement and their support. It was really nice. Um, and at Guild, as we were doing the program and working through the program, I uh, had a couple of aha moments as people were learning things. And one of the things is that I often teach standing um, at my wheel. I can stand at my lounge room and I can I can spin on it and um, I can trottle it with one foot and then I can do the demo and everybody can see. And it was funny because I was switching between all the different drafts and within a couple of minutes, I was like, I can't do this, I have to sit down. And so it meant that the participants had to come up and crowd around the wheel and look at what I was doing. And um, I do that in my classes at Sweet Georgia when we're first learning so that there can be a lot of interaction and a lot of chatting and we can talk about what I'm doing at the wheel. And it was interesting for me this time around because it is such a big group and we were spread out in quite a big room because we meet in a church hall and it's quite big. It's actually the church that I got married in. And I, um, the sound echoes and it just is a very interesting environment. So I had a couple of aha moments when I was uh, teaching and leading the program. And my friend Anne, who I uh, share workshop committee with, brought our mystery fiber for the month. And this time round, it is Black Welsh Mountain. So she gives everybody um, a little rundown on what the breed is. Uh, it is from the Southern Mountains of Wales. Um, Black Welsh are recognized as a unique breed, though they were developed strictly through years of selection for color which is sort of interesting because usually they want white sheep and these are not white. Um, the fiber is about 28 to 36 microns, so it's a little bit toothier. Staple length is anywhere between two and four inches. Charlotte's chewing on a bone, I'm sorry guys. And um, they like the color to be black. So this, I don't think this is washed. It doesn't feel washed. There's quite a bit of, it really smells sheepy. Let me tell you, the dogs wanted in on this when I got home beautiful lock structure. This staple is about two and a half inches and it's black, black, black. And um, I can feel the lanolin in it. It needs a really good wash. It's got some VM in it still, but it's just got a beautiful, um, I mean, it's very clean, or at least the one that I got is very clean. And uh, it smells like a farm. <laughs> I'm seeing her smelling it going, oh yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to washing this and working with it. Because the locks are in such good shape, I um, I may just flip card them and um, spin them from, from the lock. Um, I might comb them. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with them, but um, they're all very, very beautifully. Um, it obviously was quite a nice fleece to begin with. And uh, here's some more of them. So I'm gonna I'm I'm looking forward to working with this. I've still got my American Tunis for those who remember me talking about that, but this will be something really fun to play around with over the Christmas holiday, and hopefully I'll have some time to be able to get it washed. I find it really difficult here to wash fleece in the winter because it is so damp. We get so much rain that often it's really difficult to get stuff dry. So I'm really hoping that um oh and I've got VM all over my hands and they're oh the lanolin on my hands ooh get some moisture in there into my hands it feels good um yeah it's very difficult to get things dry and we don't tend to keep our house very warm because um the dogs get so hot so we tend to keep our house around between 16 and 18 degrees um so celsius so we um it's very difficult to get things dry so what I'm trying to say is I might wait and uh, wash that fleece in the spring and continue working with my American Tunis in the meantime. 
So do you remember last week I showed you a bobbin of finished singles for my Cheviot spin for my the Christmas socks for Mike and this is part of the blasting off spin along uh, blast off along that's going on in the group right now. You don't have to spin. You can just knit with commercial yarn. It's whatever you want to do just to get things done for Christmas. So I finished the yarn. This is one of the two hanks that I finished. Um, this is all washed. It is dry. I turned up the heat for a couple of hours and got the stuff dry. I stuck everything over a heating vent um, just hanging by gravity and I got them dry. I took some photos and I have actually started the first sock. So I am using my Fish Lips Kiss Heel template that I always use for socks, but I plugged in a different short row heel this time around. So I'm using a different heel and it's going to be very difficult to show you. So once these socks are done, I'll take some photos and I'll be able to show you. Um, but basically I've worked the heel gusset already and I'm just working the instep and then I'll be able to work up the leg of the sock. And I'm just gonna keep knitting until I run out of yarn. Um, but the foot of the sock is done. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you saw me uh, just finish, just casting on the first toe. Um, when did I start these? I guess on Tuesday night. So it's a couple of days of knitting. I'm knitting these on 2.5 millimeter needles. They are a bit thicker. I wanted these to be more like socks that he would wear in his hiking boots. Um, so yeah, I love how the colors are working up. I love the black. Um, it turned out really well. It's like a dark gray charcoal. And my absolute most favorite parts of the sock is where the colors matched up implying where the brown and the um, sort of gray teal sort of matched up implied. It just is really pretty. And this is the bottom of the sock. So I am magic looping these. I pretty much magic loop all of my socks. Um, I use 32 millimeter needles. I tend to use my Addy uh, sock rockets. Um, yeah, there isn't much to say about these because I'm just trying to get these done. I'm just blasting through. So that's where I'm at with these. And I'll talk a little bit more about this heel once I work it out. This is the first time that I've ever done this heel. So I have some initial thoughts about it, but I'll talk about it some more once I've finished. And once Mike has an opportunity to try them on and wear them a little bit, I'm interested to hear from him what he thinks about this heel because it's supposed to be a stronger heel so we will see about that and this is the ball of yarn that i'm working from and i'm about halfway through this ball so i won't make his the legs of his socks too long i'd love to have some leftover yarn to put into my mitered squares blanket so if that's the case then i'll just cast off and leave a little bit of the yarn from both of the hanks both of the balls to be able to put into that blanket I have um, another pair of socks that I'm working on actually that I'm really trying to finish for Christmas because I gave my dad the yarn for his birthday back in March and I got the first sock done right away and the second sock is about that far from being done. I just need to do the cuff. So I am going to work on those over the next week or so and get those done for Christmas and tuck them into his Christmas stocking because I also finished a toque for him already and I took a photo of it and it's up on my um, Ravelry page. I don't know if I've shared it on Instagram, mostly because my dad follows me on Instagram, so I don't want him to see it. Although if he did, I know that it would be fine. But I knitted out of some old hand spun and I used my wraps per inch toque, which is still being offered um, over in the Ravelry store. Um, just search WPI toque, wraps per inch toque, and it will come up. And if you plug in the offer code, the thank you code, thank you, all one word, no space, um, you can have the pattern for free until November 30th. So I hope that you are enjoying it. And I used that pattern to knit the toque for my dad. So I had some Aran weight yarn and I decided to cast on for that um, for him because he really needs a new toque. I knitted at a slightly tighter gauge around the brim. So I cast on using five millimeter needles instead of six and a half. And then I actually decreased needle sizes for the rest of the toque um, because it was creating such a dense fabric that I needed something a little bit looser. So I sized down the, the um, I decreased stitches and increased the needle size in the finished toque. I really like it. Um, I'm tempted to make one for myself because I have enough yarn left over. So I will try to remember to show that to you next week. The last thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly, and if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me talking about it, and it's why the camera frame is a little bit different today, but because I wanted you to see this on my dress form. 
This is my fireside pullover. This is a pullover designed by my friend Jane Richmond. Um, she's a local to me designer. She lives just over in Victoria. And this is from her recent collection with Shannon Cook called Within. This pullover has been going swimmingly. It's been going really well. But everything that I have done, every stitch that I've had to make on this cardigan has been knit at least twice. <laughs> so the collar I had to redo a couple of times and then I picked up my yoke stitches and I did all my stuff that I was supposed to do. I knit all the way down to here and I had to rip it all back. And so now this is how far I've gotten since last week since I had to rip it all out. Um, it's still on timeout. I've sort of put it off to the side for a few days while I work on Mike's socks um, just so that I can have a bit of a break from it because it's been a challenging knit in the sense that I've had to continually rip out and re-knit. And I talked about it last show, so if you're interested in learning more about this sort of process that I've been uh, dealing with the last couple of weeks, um, please head back to episode 46. However, this is looking really great. I love the yoke now that it actually is the way that it's supposed to be, and I picked up my stitches the way I'm supposed to pick them up. And it looks like, based on my um, size and my fit, that it'll fit me really well. So this is the front and then I'll flip it around and you can see the back. And this is it down the back. So this is some of my hand spun. If you've missed what this yarn is, um, it's a local to me yarn that I spun during Spinzilla. Uh, maybe head back to episode uh, 41, 42, 43 and I talk quite a bit about this yarn. Um, yeah, so this is the back of it. This is the collar and um, I need to do, I, I'm actually going to finish up this ball of yarn for the body and then I'm going to go back and knit the sleeves before I finish the body because I'd like to use up as much of the yarn as possible. So I am going to lengthen it. I was going to, I always need more length in my torso anyways. Um, from my underarm to a, uh, to my upper hip. So about here, I'm uh, 17 inches. So all those sweater patterns that are, you know, cast off at 13 inches, cast off at 15 inches, they're all way too short for me. So I need to lengthen it by at least two inches anyways, but I think I'd like to lengthen it by about four inches and make it a bit longer, more like a, uh, a gentle tunic length to come right down over my jeans and make it 19 inches. So I'm going to knit the sleeves next and then I'm going to go back and finish the body once I know how much yarn I have. So... That is sort of what I am working on. I don't have a lot to share with you this week because it has been um, a crazy week and the kids have been sick. I, of course, am working this weekend. I've, I'm going into uh, some night shifts. So to those of you who are um, spinning and knitting and enjoying your fiber stuff this weekend, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And for the rest of us who are at work, I hope that you can take your knitting with you. And until next week, happy spinning. Bye guys.